Hi, everybody. My name is Buddy Gott. Welcome to the Buddy Gott Show. On today's show, I am very happy to have a guest with me and myself and this guest are talking about the great big popular supernatural horror show, Stranger Things, which was so popular this summer here in the United States and all over the world and in the universe. And uh, we'll talk about that. But first, I want to introduce you to Jesse James Freeman. Welcome to the show, Jesse. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. My pleasure. My pleasure. Jesse was a guest on my old show, Buddy's Writing Show, probably oh, well over a year ago. And uh, there, I'm just going to announce real quick, Jesse is, Jesse is a writer. Jesse, you want to just real quick tell the people uh, you know, what you have out there, if they want to check it out? Uh, yeah, I, 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 wrote a, I wrote a crazy book called uh, Billy Purgatory, and uh, I'm currently in the process of uh, – tweaking those books and uh universe as a whole so awesome soon awesome you you cut out a little bit there but that's okay uh we know it's billy purgatory so everyone i want everyone to check that out and the reason i wanted to have jesse on the show is jesse is like his knowledge of the 80s is is just amazing i i see the the things you post online about 80s pop culture whether it's movies or tv or music and i knew that when stranger things came out and i saw it was about the 80s and I, I'm, I'm like oh man jesse's gonna be so into this and i get the feeling you were huh you you, you very much enjoyed stranger things uh yeah that's uh it, it was uh totally rad totally awesome uh, <laughs> totally rad. I, mean, I agree. It, oh, it's I'm it. It's I watched it probably. Oh, I don't know, three weeks, a month ago. I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Yeah. Uh, it, it's uh, let's talk about. So uh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Great, great. And for people who maybe don't know what it's about, uh, what is called Stranger Things, it takes place in, I believe it's no, it starts in November of 1983, and it's in this small, I believe, fictional town in Indiana where there's these, well, these strange things going on, and it centers around this group of uh, children. I believe they're about 12 years old uh, boys. There is a female character in there, too, who is quite interesting. She's not originally part of their little gang, but she becomes part of their gang, and uh, was What's great about the show is it's uh, – boy, I, one of the things I see people talk about regarding the show is um, all the little homages to popular things from the 80s. Uh, they're, they're, like, uh, for, exa for example, the creators of the show, the Duffer Brothers, I know they're big fans of Stephen King, and you can see a lot of Stephen King influence on there. Are you, big, are you a Stephen King fan, Jesse? I am, and, and I, I, I – every – you know, I, I had a couple of people recommend the show to me. And uh, I was like, well, okay, uh, what's it about? And they were like, uh, okay, take Stephen King and combine him with, like, Steven Spielberg from the 80s, and you kind of got the show. And, like, I saw so much of that. It, um, like, that was such an apt description because I'm, I'm fans of, of both of those guys. And, and, uh, and, and the whole time period – enough where it's nostalgic for me um because i i was actually about those kids age probably and uh so you know right and i i everyone that i've talked to who has seen it who you know lived lived in the 80s who was old enough to you know experience the 80s uh, they haven't but they felt they felt the same way that you just described and the, that's the same way i feel too i mean i mean the producers the creators of this show i mean i mean they they nailed it i, I mean I, I mean they really nailed so many things from then um like you said definitely like the stephen king and spielberg influence i know i had um seen there, there's some things in there like even from you know you can tell we're influenced by E.T., from Spielberg, definitely a lot of Stephen King stuff. Um, yeah, it, it's quite interesting. Matter of fact, I was reading that the the creators of this show, apparently they wanted to um, do the remake of It that's coming up. The Duffer Brothers, I think, were like negotiating to be the producers of that, and it didn't happen. Oh. And, it's, and apparently the boy who plays Mike in this, you know, the, lead, the leader of the group of in this remake of it and they weren't going to get him at first 
they weren't going to be able to get him for Stranger Things because he was already committed to it. But then that got, the production of that got pushed back. So this kid's going to have like all these like you know Stephen King and like eighties connections, which is kind of cool. And um, yeah, the, the, the you definitely boy, got the. the I'm sorry, he, say it again. Eighties kid, and you know. Uh, 35 years after the fact, you know, he's growing up an 80s kid after he does all this stuff. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I'll say the casting of these kids in this, I thought was fantastic. And uh, when well, you got the boy we just mentioned, Mike, I mean, I, I really like him. I think they just, you know, it seemed like to me that they really were like going for certain looks for these characters. I know I was watching it with my wife, Lisa, who I know you know. And uh, if you're, anyone's watching the video of this, I've got a coffee cup here that's got me and Lisa's picture on it. That's from our wedding day, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm a big sap, sorry. But um, we were watching it. We were watching it, and we were both saying, you know, oh, that kid looks like so and so from an '80s movie, or that kid looks like another character from like an '80s movie, and even the one. Um, character he's like the teenager the the kind of like the outsider his name is jonathan he's the one who's a, who's like at the interest of photography he's got a crush on the one kid's sister i mean he kind of to me like has it seems like they were going for like a river phoenix type look there I, the, the producers i think were really gone for specific things again to to pay honor to previous things yeah i mean they're it, it, when you when when you when you think about the elements that we already talked about, and then you you move over to the casting, there's so much of like uh, I, I mean I can see where Stand by Me was a huge influence on 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 that. Um, already said E. I mean, there's so much E. T. in there. There's so much. Yeah. Um, uh, oh. Uh, the town too, you know what yeah. I mean? It, it like I, the town to me was also like was a pretty important character because it the 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 whole setting of it. I saw so much from like the the Spielberg, like the you know the sort of um, the sort of families out in the suburbs, you know, when he was doing all that in the eighties. Yeah, I saw totally. uh, like a lynch town like like there there was a lot of twin peaks sort of like underlying in a lot of that with me yeah i thought so too i thought so too and and i mean kids they they sort of like um like when you combine the casting to with the setting and then all the homages that get thrown at you it it, it really is sort of a a, a transportive experience i don't know if i just made up a word maybe i did but anyway <laughs> it was a good it, word it, man. it takes you it takes you back to the 80s and like i was just like this isn't an 80s movie i'm watching because childhood it's amazing yeah it really is and what i think is nice too is that um I know a couple of weeks ago I was in a Starbucks and I was behind this uh, young lady in line and she was talking to someone else so right around her age. I'd say couldn't have been more than maybe 21, probably between 18 and 21. And they were talking about the show. And um, this young lady was saying that uh, because her friend had asked her what she thought of it. And she goes, you know, what you, she goes, you know what? I was watching it with my parents and they were like talking 80s this, 80s that. And I didn't get a lot of that stuff, but I still loved it. And I think that's the beauty of like this show is that people like you and I and others who love the eighties are, are really going to appreciate those things that we've been talking about. But, but I, you don't have to even know about that stuff to appreciate the story in here too. I mean, it was a really well-told story with really, I think some fantastic acting too, by these kids and by the adults in the cast too, like Winona Ryder. It doesn't get any more eighties than Winona. You know what I mean? And, and, <laughs> I mean, in, you know, unless they unless they go uh, some unless they do some Molly Ringwald or something in season two. I mean, it, you know, <laughs> that's true. More eighties than that, I, but uh, I thought she was Ralph amazing. Ralph Macchio in too. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, let's throw him in. Uh, yeah, but, but Winona, I, I thought Winona was amazing. Yeah, she was great. Uh, oh, Jesse, you're cutting out. 
Yeah. Uh, can you still hear me? Yeah, I'm sorry. You, you lagged, but I think we're back. I think we're good. Yeah, yeah. Winona was amazing. Like you said, total 80s, and she was wonderful in the part. You did because you don't really. You, I, I don't know. I I've never really seen her play a part like that before. No, I uh, haven't either. She's, she's the mom, and and she's you know, I, I and I thought she did great. Um, um, anything bad about the cast? Really? I mean. <laughs> I keep trying to think if I have a gripe and like, I can't think of anybody that would just sort of like phoned it in, you know? No, nobody phoned it in. And uh, I, had, I can't remember if I mentioned him yet or not, but Matthew Modine, another person who became popular in the eighties. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with Matthew Modine from uh, vision quest. That was a classic eighties movie. That, that hair. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the hair. I, I at first I'm like, wow, that's boy Matthew Modine changed. Yeah, uh, that that was just yeah. I was like, well, I was like, whoa, I want that hair like now. <laughs> like, wow, it was amazing. But uh, Modine, yeah, was was great in it. And you know, um, uh, as far as the horror stuff goes, and and like um, sort of a like. Uh, a Cronenberg vibe off of uh, spoiler territory, but into into some of the the lab stuff that Modine had going on. Right, right. I, I saw a lot of creepy older like David Cronenberg Videodrome stuff happening with so you know stuff like that. Right, and there was a boy. What's the one movie too? And I and I, I don't want you know what. All right, I'm just gonna tell tell this to anybody who's listening. Right now, we're going to go into like the. Uh, we're going to talk about some. Th- if you haven't watched Stranger Things yet, we're going to be we're going to be doing some you know spoilers here. Okay, so you might want to like tune out and then like you know go go on to Amazon and and pick up Jesse's book or like go visit my website or or do something fun for yourself or go hey here's an idea go watch Stranger Things. But we're going to talk some now about some of the stuff you don't might not want to hear so yeah spoiler stuff that that boy there's there's some freaky stuff going on in that lab isn't there jesse james freeman uh yes sir that um that that was uh that was some crazy stuff and um felt like um you know i mean there's the obvious parallels with like firestarter and like stuff like that that's happened with um with with the with 11 who um you know uh who is amazing she, she plays was. the she plays the little girl who um i get too, too spoilery even though we're spoilering but um she's she's a little girl who is sort of like uh she's she's got she's a telekinetic experiment basically right. uh she ends up uh, um she ends up escaping and in 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 joining the group of the of the kids the which i I kind of call them the stand by me kids until she sort of like yeah. joins up with them and then yeah, yeah, you turn can... into like a whole new thing. And, and she's awesome. Their own... um, go ahead. I was just going to say they have their own, they have a very separate dynamic until you like mix her in, you know, with, with them. And, um, uh, uh yeah, but yeah, I, I was just like, wow. Um, her, you know what I mean? Because yeah. she did such a good job. She did. That little girl, and you know, to me, and she, she to me looks a lot like uh, like a, a really young version of Winona Ryder too. I thought like a kind of like a combination of her and like Natalie Portman, and and uh, the kid's great. I, I saw that her name is Millie Bobby Brown, and she's actually <laughs> yeah. And, and and you know, I I don't like to be reminded too much of Bobby Brown, but uh, you know, hopefully, you know, she will not be linked to him like her whole career because she's a great actress and uh i'm excited I'm, i'll tell you the, the kids were wonderful like we said modine was great winona Ryder. i'm not too familiar with the actor who played uh the sheriff but he was really good uh um, I, I yeah I, I i david harbour is his name and i i had i've seen him in other stuff i looked him up on imdb and and um I feel like this is uh well for i mean for most people involved with this um except for with you know with the exception of like Ryder and modine 
this is kind of a breakout for him too because yeah. he was very solid in this. And you know, again, like going back to Twin Peaks, I got a you know, you know the small town sheriff vibe. I got a um, island thing going on with uh, Roy Schneider from uh, Jaws. Yeah, you know, with the yeah. And you know what's funny? With, I was going to bring that up. Police department, yeah. Yeah, the police department. I, I was just reading that today, and I, I didn't really pick up on it the first time around, but apparently that was deliberate. The police department, the uniforms, the vehicles, it was it was identical to what they had in both Jaws and Jaws 2 for, for the Amityville. Yeah, I read it. I, or Amity, I guess, right? Um, I read it after the fact, and I was, and I was like, uh, I was like, okay. That's that's why that that's why I kept going like man those the that that old blazer that he drives around in those like brown uniforms you know I was yeah. like I've seen those somewhere before but you know but I mean that's the whole, that's the whole production design of this I, I mean it must have been so fun to sit down and like storyboard and like and, and like do all the production design on this on this stuff if like you were if you were from that era because they they threw in everything in the kitchen sink. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. And, you know, it was one thing with that sheriff. I, I had noticed, uh, I had just read this, too. Apparently, his name is, uh, he's Chief Jim Hopper. And I was reading that that was actually uh, the name of a character in Predator, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. There's a character. Oh, that isn't, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Arnold is like going after uh, the character named Jim Hopper, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> and and one, one thing I think they could have, they should have maybe done different with the chief though, is he had the scruff going on a lot throughout it. They should have given him like a Burt Reynolds slash Tom Selleck mustache. Oh man, that would have been awesome if he was, yeah. He's like, he's like Roy Schneider meets uh, Magnum P.I. That would have been yeah. awesome. Yeah, maybe maybe the second season. I'm gonna write to the producers. I'm gonna suggest it, and uh, I think all they got all they all they gotta do is throw in a Ferrari, man, and they're good. <laughs> you know, we're good. Exactly, exactly. And uh, oh, you know what they should do too, Jesse. And I'm I'm saying this just for you, but it, any production would benefit from this, and that's to hire the actors from Simon and Simon and give them some parts in it. Oh, Simon and Simon, the, the uh, yes, please, yeah. Hollywood, yeah. if you're listening, let. Let me, let me make the Simon and Simon movie. That's all I want in life. <laughs> I know. I know you do. I know you do. And, uh, you I know, do. what else? I wanted to talk just a couple other things about the show. And really, folks, if you haven't seen it yet, well, you shouldn't be watching this part. But it was just so good. There's so many great characters in there. Um, I, I liked, too, the, the kid. I mean, you hate him because he's the boyfriend. Um, he's Nancy's boyfriend. His name's Steve, where he's like this typical, like, 80s jerk like arrogant but then you know he might have elements of goodness and it was sort of like a james spader type i thought like like james spader could have played that back in the 80s totally he, yeah he he even uh he he kind of looks like spader sometimes a little bit even um the, you know the, and there's something weird going on with the with that whole dynamic between him and uh, nancy who who is the sister the main character, uh, Mike, and and uh, going on with them, and then like uh, with Jonathan, who's the older brother that we talked about, because kind of at the end, it's really like it's really strange. Like, okay, who's together? Like, who gave him the new camera for Christmas? Like, you know what right. I mean? Yeah. So, there were some little weird, like subtle cliffhangers in it that made it even better. Kind of like, okay, where's the sheriff at? Like, like, whose side is he on? Yeah, exactly. Over, you know? Yeah, and they, you know, of course, yeah. I think when they made it, they had no idea if it would go to a second season, but they kind of left it in a spot that would, you know, a bit of a cliffhanger there, like you said, and, and uh, thankfully there is going to be a second season, like we've said a couple times. I'm, a, I'm a, hopefully, uh, you know, they can keep it going as well as the first season because the first season has I, it's knocked everybody out. I feel like there's going to be a couple of more seasons. You know what I mean? I I, I, I don't think. So. think uh, I mean, they they did such a good job with the first one with the first with the first season that I. I 
True Detective season two to like uh, knock this thing off the rails. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I, they can. They and what's great is they are still like you know. Well, these kids are young enough that they could have all kinds of adventures with them. It's the beginning of the '80s, so they got a lot they can tap into there. And uh, well, the, well, just with the the material that's there, and and it's great. And it is that kind of small town where you you can see like all different kinds of stuff happening. It, it's exciting. I, I mean, I I hope it stays around for a long time. And I, it's it's one I think that you can watch over and over again and pick up things each time. Can we can we can we talk nerdy for just a second about one how awesome it is that the show basically starts out with a Dungeons and Dragons game? That's <laughs> that totally, is pretty awesome. That's only totally nerdy in eighties. Are you and were you that, a Dungeons and Dragons fan? What do you think? Yeah, I'm course. thinking yes. I, I wasn't. I actually never played yeah. it, but but I thought maybe Did you. Not, you were probably out, you were probably going out with girls and and stuff like that on dates. Yeah, I was playing Dungeons and Dragons. I was an idiot, but anyway, but uh, starts with the Dungeons and Dragons game, and then um, when they're when they're doing their when they when the when the kids get together to research about these these, these parallel dimensions and things like that. They basically get their information about the 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 overlying like evil from like a Dungeons and Dragons like <laughs> book. Yeah, exactly. You know, no, I mean the, the science teacher does throw in a little bit, and if you notice, he does kind of have the Tom Selleck mustache. He going does, on. yeah. And I, I liked his character a lot. I guess it, Mr. Clark. He, he was good. He was he he made me think of all the great you know like. Um, you know the science teacher from uh, from Gremlins, and you know yeah. all those guys. But um, he yeah, like a, he was like a, essentially a grown up version of those kids. You know, he you could tell he was like a nerdy kid like them, and it was, it was totally. pretty cool. He's yeah, it gets him into like ham radio, which like was the internet back then. You know, like yeah. that's the closest thing we had. Yeah, the members yeah. of the AD club. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Like the. Do, do they even do that anymore? Who knows? I don't yeah, know. I don't but, think so. Uh, yeah. I think kids today would be like, "What's AV? What's a? What's AV? What's the AV club?" Yeah, they're all like uh, iPhones and stuff. But yeah, like, but we all are. But um, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, uh, there, there just there was just so many. I, I don't want to get into the. I don't want to get into the evil dimension, really. But um. That's a total character in it in of itself, and yeah. that was the biggest parallel to me as far as when you when you compare like if you if you're familiar with Twin Peaks when you compare Cooper in the Black Lodge and then you you look at like the what they call the upside down things, right. and um, I, I saw some I saw some really heavy parallels there. Especially, you know, at the end, when when you get when you get close to the end, and, and uh, it's all like, you know, he's not Cooper anymore, and then so you're worried about this, uh, you know, who's who got who got left maybe over in the other dimension, and like who's real, right. who's not, yeah, yeah, exactly. Flash, there's some definite flashbacks going on there. Yeah, and you got me. You, you're getting me excited about the new Twin Peaks too, because we're not too far off from that. But we'll yeah. save that for a future show. We'll save that for a future show. And uh, let's say I, one last thing I wanted to talk about regarding this show too was uh, something that I know that you're into, like I am, and that's the music from that era. Uh, that they had some really cool music that they worked into this show. I thought. Uh, I mean the 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 fact that the that the the actual the actual you know. Um, show is mostly 80 synthesizer you know what i mean yeah was, yeah was like, true. that was perfect before you even get into like the the pop songs and and, the, and stuff that they throw in from the era thing man to the fonts to the to the you know the synth music it makes you think of old john carpenter like stuff yeah exactly and uh, um as far as the music goes man what what big big surprise for you in there that like, wow, I can't believe they threw that song in there. Or? Um, 
I don't know. I was kind of um, well. They threw in some favorites of mine, like like for example, uh, I love Toto, and they had Toto in there. I think it was Africa they played. Uh, Modern English, I know, was in there. Uh, um, I'll melt with you, which was a uh, absolutely. I love that. I was a big fan of the movie Valley Girl, and that's you know where the, I'm sure you were too, and that's you know where <laughs> exactly. we got to know that. Yeah. Who was it? The Plimsolls? Did they do that song? No, no, no. Uh, I'm sorry. I just said it. Modern English. Oh. Uh... Plimsolls was something else from that, uh, but I'm kind of like that. That doesn't matter because the Plimsolls aren't in Stranger Things. <laughs> but uh, you know what? It did. It kind of surprised me a little bit, and uh, I hate to be too picky, but I, they at first I was annoyed that it was in there, and it was the Bangles' "Hazy Shade of Winter." You know that song? Yeah. The reason I say that, yeah, is, that's it, 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 the song came out after 1983. Uh, which kind of annoyed me just because I'm picky about stuff like that. But it that can be argued too because it's an older song by Simon and Garfunkel from the 60s. But, you know, it was the Bangles version being played there. But also too, uh, they kind of were, just with the lyrics of that, alluding to some things a little bit that could be coming up. You know, like... Um, time, well, time, time, see what's become of me? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, and uh, just like the whole the winter aspect of you know what they see in that other realm, you know, with like snowflakes and that you know, like sort of like a hazy shade of winter could be coming to, you know, I, I you can go in different directions with. That. <laughs> I'm 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 pretty sure now that I think about it, you you guys can check me in the comments or whatever on YouTube, but I'm pretty sure hazy shade of winter was part of the uh, less than zero soundtrack. Yeah, uh, you're yeah, absolutely right. Which I think was yeah. eight, more eighty five ish, maybe. I, I don't know. Some somewhere in there, yeah. Yeah, but that's uh, just like real nitpicky of me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, 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 but um, yeah. I mean, you were correct about that for sure. Well, thanks, thanks. And, and, we're, and nit- you, you were digging some I had of these little nitpicks. nitpicks. I'm sorry. I think I was talking over you, Jesse. Um, no, I, I mean, I, yeah, you, you named off like my greatest hits it's so far out of that. So yeah, the music was great. I, I was fascinated, like I said, with the synthesizer stuff because it was just like, so I thought it set like not only the perfect tone, I was like, why aren't they using synthesizer stuff in like movies anymore now? You know, but yeah, yeah really. it's still so 80s. Yeah, I, I I loved it, and uh, I I knew you would too. And uh, as soon as it came out, and I I saw you commenting on you know the internet about it, I was like, yeah, Jesse and I are in the same place for this. I got to have him on the show and talk about it. What a great show! I'll tell you, man. Netflix did a hell of a job with that. They they continue to make just pop not it. Um, I don't know who's picking shows over there, but uh, keep up the good work. My only yeah. gripe, Netflix, my only gripe to you about Stranger Things at episode eight, and I was like, "This wait, whoa, we're stopping here? What are you talking about? <laughs> 13 episodes of this, you know? Exactly, which makes me, and now that it's a hit, I'm wondering if they'll go longer with future seasons. Cause, yeah, they're probably like, they're probably like, man, we should have added a couple more. We should have done like four more or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. It's funny because a show like this, it, it, it's it's risky in a lot of ways. I mean, it, it, it could have totally bombed. It, it could have like, you know, just come out. It would have had a little bit of a following just because, you know, the biggest stars in it are more stars from the past, you know, so it doesn't have that, you know, that thing where people are clamoring for like, you know, ooh, you know, ooh, new Matthew Rodin series, you know, but uh, everybody was, was great. really – you know what they? You know what was really interesting to me about this was kind of like the uh, the like Daredevil or uh, you know one of the Marvel shows or you know it didn't have that sort of cachet behind it. Um, Fred, you know, over the internet, I I mean yeah. I thought I, it sort of like came out of nowhere. I knew that it was coming. Yeah, you know, I didn't and either. Just everybody's all of a sudden like telling you, "Oh my god, you have to watch this show," you know, and you see it like explode on the internet over the course of like three days, and I was like, 
watching this now, I guess, because, you know, people won't stop talking about it. Exactly. Yeah, I hadn't heard anything about it either. And I and I kind of, like you, you know, I, I pay attention to a lot of different, like, news news sources for like entertainment things where I'm pretty like aware of most things that are coming out that are going to be, that are supposedly going to be a big deal. And this was, this was just like this sleeper hit. And, and I think it was cool too, that it launched in the summertime. I, I think it, you know, didn't get lost with like, like other shows that might be on like the reg, the regular networks. And, uh, you know, it, it got that chance for people to discover it, which is awesome. And, and yeah, the, the, the word of mouth was just out of control. I haven't, I haven't seen a, a show take off like that in quite some time. It was amazing. You know, bravo to everyone who, you know, the, the Duffer brothers, the whole cast, the, I mean, the, the directors, it, it's just, I, I literally, I, I'd love to be critical about it and like find something, you know, so I'm just like, yeah, well, they could have done this better, but I can't really find anything, you know? I mean, yeah. I'm just yeah, exactly. a nostalgic I mean, nerd. And the only thing I could find was like that hazy shade of winter thing, which is like, I feel like a schmuck for even saying that. And it's really not that big of a deal. <laughs> I mean, it was a damn good show. It was fantastic. And there was one little homage thing that was in the upside down that I thought may have been a, okay a little too overt and I, I, I'm not going to tell anybody, anybody, ever, anybody like what it was but I was just like okay that's a little that's a little maybe over the top but hmm. that, you know that's a very minor thing over eight episodes but I don't right. know if I should but let's just say that that they find an egg there's an egg. So yeah, you, you know, use your thing in the eighties and uh, yeah, use your imagination. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, Jesse, I thank you so much for being on the show and talking about this great series. And uh, I'll tell you, I, I, I kind of want to go back and rewatch them all now. <laughs> I, I, I feel like that's probably what my Saturday is going to look like maybe. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. There you go. All right. Well, thank you, sir. And uh, everyone go check out Jesse James Freeman on Amazon. And, and I don't, I don't know where else it is, but. Uh, now nah, you can find me on, I'm, I'm all over the internet. I'm he's all over the internet. And, Jesse know, James Freeman. Check him I've out. Got, I got Pinterest, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm everywhere. <laughs> you can find me. <laughs> all Bye. right. Thanks a lot, Jesse. And everybody, thank you so much for listening. Go watch Stranger Things. Bye.